In this video, we will see a brief overview of Habermas' essay Modernity, an incomplete project. During the 12th to 17th centuries, the term modern was used to describe a renewed connection to an ancient era. However, this meaning of modernity changed with the advent of the French Enlightenment in the 18th century. In the 19th century, the Romantic movement brought about a radical sense of modernity that sought to break free from the past in historical ties. This concept of aesthetic modernity has been passed down to us. Aesthetic modernity is characterized by a transformed perception of time where the present is exalted and exploration of uncharted territories is pursued. It involves embracing new forms of experience and anticipating an undefined future. This shift in time consciousness, as embodied in Bergson's philosophy, reflects the experience of mobility in society, historical acceleration, and the disruptions of everyday life. This new kind of modernity challenges the normative functions of tradition, rejecting moral and unified standards. It neutralizes these standards, as well as the notion of an established morality, reflecting a revolt against the constraints imposed by tradition. Habermas aims to refute the argument made by neoconservatives like Daniel Bell who attribute the crises and contradictions of capitalism to modernist culture. Bell believes that modernist culture, with its emphasis on unlimited self-realization and hyperstimulated sensitivity, has permeated everyday life and is incompatible with professional life and the moral foundations of purposeful and rational conduct. Habermas, however, argues that capitalist economic and social modernization is primarily responsible for these issues. Culture, including modernist culture, has played a direct and intermediary role in this transformation. Habermas stresses the importance of communicative rationality, for maintaining cultural traditions and social integration. The Enlightenment Project, which was part of the broader project of modernity, aimed to develop objective science, universal morality and law, and autonomous art, according to their inherent logic. The goal was to employ specialized culture for the enrichment and rational organization of everyday social life. The arts and sciences were seen as vehicles for understanding the world, the self, moral progress, and justice, in addition to exerting control over nature. However, the 20th century shattered the optimism associated with this vision. The various spheres of art, science, and morality became increasingly isolated from everyday life, developing specialized autonomy. Art, in particular, became detached from the real world and immersed in self-reference. This situation can only be remedied by reintegrating the aesthetic with the cognitive and the moral practical aspects of life. Habermas emphasizes that we should not succumb to the fear of one sphere dominating the others and condemn the surviving Enlightenment tradition as rooted in a narrow rationality. It is important to reject an exclusive focus on aesthetics that disregards truth and justice. The isolation of aesthetic experience from ordinary life dissolves once it is reintegrated into our everyday experiences. Habermas categorizes post-structuralists such as Derrida and Foucault, as well as their precursors like Betail, under the umbrella of aesthetic modernity. Their emphasis on decentralized subjectivity, liberated from work and utility, leads them to step outside the modern world. He refers to them as young conservatives. On the other hand, the old conservatives completely reject cultural modernism and retreat to a stance predating modernity, often adopting a neo-Aristotelian perspective. Lastly, the neoconservatives depoliticize the content of cultural modernity, 
and view aesthetic experience as purely private, asserting the pure immanence of art.